Um, well, thank you for getting on. In terms of the call, we can kind of go for as long as you need. I saw that you just put one kind of thing that you wanted to cover in the, um, not application, but like little form about mm-hmm. trading indices and, and closing early. Can you tell me like a little bit about your trading history and where you currently are and any problems that you're currently having? Yeah, so I, I've been trading for, for a while, like almost the stocks anyway, almost a decade now. And I moved to Forex because uh, I just wanted uh, easier opportunity to make income. You know, I hated having to risk, you know, I wouldn't say risk. I, wouldn't have to, I hated having to use, you know, 30% of my leverage to make my daily goal. Right. Um, where with stocks, you know, if you're getting one to four, I have one account where I get one to six because it's a professional account. But um, even that, I mean, it's it's really hard to like, you know, use have all that money tied up if you want to make long term investments. So moved over to forex, mm-hmm. and basically at first, I really I really struggled. I was hopping around, you know, like trying to like I was like uh, popping into like every signal room, and I was back testing all their signals. Found out that they all had negative R long term, mm-hmm. um, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Strategy hopping. Um, so I pretty much uh, I have a pretty consistent strategy that's been working it's sort of i would call it like a like a, i don't know if you i think you do i think i saw that we're the same the no nonsense sense forex yes. stuff where it's it's yeah. purely indicator based um because that's sort of how i trade i trade stocks i trade stocks on right. on bear flag v watt bounces and that's like that's my bread and butter i can do that every day 9 30 to 10 in and out of the market make the money so um that's always how i traded them but I understand fundamentals. So I sort of do like a, um, an indicator fundamental hybrid system I use where I basically just trade around the news. Um, it's been pretty good, but the issue is I have a baby now. So my primary, like for my back testing and for my forward testing where I made the most money is like two thirty AM my time to like eight o'clock my time. So mm-hmm. I, for a while I was waking up at two, that's sort of like impossible to handle now with the baby sure. and everything else, my company. So <clears throat> I've sort of tried to like start shifting to more closer to New York session. And it's been, it was okay, but I was missing a lot of opportunities. And with right. my back tested strike rate for Forex, it just wasn't working out. Um, so in the past, I haven't managed to get two funded accounts. So I've been trading those both for probably two quarters now. Um, there, okay. I got a, a FTMO in my Forex funds. Um, I, I've been able to sort of, you know, do fairly well. I wouldn't say anything insane, but, um, like even last month, last month was my worst month. I managed to, to dig myself back up from, uh, I think it was like down six R to, to right above, I think like two R. So, I mean, I, I, I have my bad, my slumps, my losing streak slumps as you will statistically, but I've recently shifted over to just trading um, SPX, NAS, um, Dow, and gold because those okay. I have the most familiar familiarity with being a stock trader primarily, um, and they really do well in my in my session. I'd like to have my trading session be about four thirty five a.m. until ten or eleven a.m. and cut it. And that's that's it. Um, the issue I'm having though, is my, my indicator based system. I'm missing a lot of like the other trades that I would take normally if I was up all day. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's messing with my, my strike rate. And then I've been having an issue because I've been shifting over to this. So now I'm, I'm a lot of times, like if I hit a losing streak, I start cutting my R early. Um, and the indicator system I'm using, it's, it sort of does the main part of it is like, uh, I don't want to say supply and demand and sound like a smart money uh, yeah. concept trader, but it, it basically the way it, it's like a custom coded indicator um, that I had coded. And it basically uh, it calculates like, I guess the closest terminology would be like imbalances in wicks. So it calculates if there's like 30 wicks within like a certain calculated statistical range, right. then it will post that zone as like a zone of interest. And I, I usually use that as my main trading jumping off point, you know, highs and lows, and then swing from there. Mm-hmm. Um, the issue, the issue I'm having though, is in my back testing, it doesn't repaint, but if a zone is broken, but then retested later in the back testing software, um, 
I can't back test it easily because I have to manually draw those boxes in over the entire chart. Um, right. Because once it's broken and retest, that zone goes away. And then I can't get accurate numbers. So I'm having a really hard time just sort of balancing, like, should I be going for a one to three, set it and forget it? Should I be going for a one to five, set it and forget it? Like, where is the... Uh, like where is the R that I'm going for? So I've sort of been trying to branch out and see if I can add to the indicator strategy that I use that's primarily like point of interest, swing high, swing low, pivot point mm -hmm. based, and add a little bit more technical indicators that some that other people have sort of been working with and back testing to sort of get a locked down, uh, solid, consistent RR that I can shoot for every month. So yeah. Um so you, you're not trading like Forex or stocks, you're just trading the ones that you mentioned before, right? Yeah, so I'm just doing the CFDs. I'm not doing, okay. um, I mean, I, I, I did futures for a while, but um, again, like one contract of SPY was like $16,000 that I had to keep available. Yeah. Um, and I like to do a lot of like, uh, like dividend investment and some like growth swings and stuff. So it was just in like it just didn't make money sense to have all that money tied up in you know buying a few contracts to make yeah you know twelve dollars a point or something like that so i mean whenever i've kind of tested um one to three is typically like the best mm -hmm. um and that's like across forex and uh, smp um anything above that and you get like really big spikes in or when it's going well and really big dips whenever it's not going well um and for me i don't really like that um so i don't know what i don't i don't know if you mind kind of the, the big spikes in equity or whatever but um for me like the one to three is good um you can go more if you want to but i don't i don't really think it's worth it um in terms of like the closing trades early are you are you closing them because your indicators are saying get out or are you closing them for a different reason uh, so I guess for me personally um, it's it's sort of what's happening is because I've been having like this year my system is is was was definitely tested during a ranging market but not a market with this much volatility I would say it's, right. it was not tested in a, in a bear market so I didn't back test the whole bit, whole way back to like you know 2007, 2008. Yeah. Um, so it did okay in COVID market because I'm able to trade both ways, no problem. But how we're having like a lot of like, I would say like a, a bigger volatility range yeah. where we're having like massive, it's not, I wouldn't really consider this even a bear market because we're back to January highs already. So yeah. it's um, a lot of times like I'll, I'll see something and I'm like 2.1 R in profit and I'll be like, oh, I should, I should close this and it will spike or I'll see something and it will be, you know, like 2.8, 2.9, like about to hit my TP and reverse on me. And I'll be like, ah, oh, you know, like I'll just let it run. And then it goes down and, yeah. you know, I should have, I should have been managing it better and I didn't manage it at all. And it just, you know, smacks my stop loss and then I'm out. So. Yeah. I mean, I know what you mean. Cause I was, I had the similar thing whenever I was trading S and P like from January. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah i know what you mean and i i had trouble trying to figure out what to do um for me i always like i want to remember just to stick to the plan because like you you've tested it you know it works and you don't know when the market's going to switch to be uh, uh, bullish again or what whatever conditions work best for your strategy um so the more you can just stick to it i think the better something that I learned from an S and B trader was to just reduce the risk that you're putting on. So let's say you see yourself going into drawdown, just cut your risk in half and then build it back up. If the market is showing that it's doing well. Um, I think he was, he was calling that risk exposure. So I don't know if you've tried that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I personally haven't, so I'm not sure how, good that would work for me but um you could have a little go at that and see if that works well um yeah what do you think about that yeah that's something i i, I think i i might try um yeah i think 
I think that is is the biggest thing is because I, I it took me so long. I mean, for me anyway, um, what I can say, I guess, you know, on Reddit and stuff, I talked to you about it, I guess two years isn't that long, but it took me so long to get to the funded account point that mm. now like I'm just trying to like, you know, maintain that. And I think that's a lot more uh a lot more stress than I thought it would be, which is a lot where my issue comes from, where I, I see stuff. And uh, a lot of it too, is I'm trying to, so my indicators will be telling me, um, you know, like, Hey, like this is, we're coming up to a pivot point. This might be a good point to get in. And yeah. I find myself trying to like predict the pivot points a lot too. Right. So I think that um, adding some extra things into my strategy. Um, I know you talk a lot about having the, I, I usually trade from just one chart. So right. having like the multi-chart super trend, um, with some other indicators, I might try and incorporate some of that stuff into there as well. Yeah, I mean, so the stuff that I've kind of spoken about is, um, like, I don't do all of it because we have a lot of strategies on the channel, but um, I basically try to build things that other people can use. Mm -hmm. um, some of it I am using myself, obviously, and then some of it is mainly just to help other people that have kind of said that they're struggling with certain things. So um the the different time frame indicators can work, um, but it can also get quite complicated and just overthink things. So I think keeping it simple is always good. Um and you mentioned something else a minute ago and I can't remember what I was gonna say. Um Oh, yeah, uh, you don't have to obviously answer this, but is this your only income in terms of trading? Is that like what you rely on? Uh, well, no. So I have, um, I've got a uh, business and I also, uh, I'm a veteran, so I get, uh, I get a, a pension from that. Um, but okay. yes, I did recently leave my high paying job. So, um, basically, so would, would I've got you those be able two. to reduce that risk and still be able to. Because you're not going to be making as much, obviously, but you talked yeah. about the stress. And yeah, so I, I mean, I think I could, I could bring it down to like a 0.5, I think, with my like back testing data and still, you know, be okay income wise a month. Yeah. Um, I think from a stress yeah. wise, it's always good to reduce the stress because mm -hmm. um, you don't want stress whenever you're trading. Like, you want to be trading for a long time. You don't want to be trading for, I don't know, six months. Like, yeah. It's it's always better to prioritize mental health over the amount of money that you're going to make, in my opinion, anyway. Um, mm. So if you can reduce the risk and still be good, I, I think that would probably help in a lot of ways. Um, and you might even result in not closing those trades down early because you don't. There's no pressure to close those those trades down early, or you don't feel like you need to. Um, yeah. I know there's quite a few things that you can mm -hmm. you can do, but um, yeah, I think that yeah. might be part of it too. Because you know, now that I, I have a personal account that I trade from, and I usually um, okay. because I've I mean I've done extensive testing on it, I usually trade with the higher risk uh, because yeah. it's a personal account, and I'm able to absorb those equity spikes, you know, very easily. Uh, yeah. But I think part of it too is you know I'm eventually I'd like to build that up to the amount of my funded accounts. But you, know, I think part of it is as well when I see that okay, I was just up, you know, nine, ten thousand dollars and now I'm going to lose, you know, two thousand or I guess four thousand across two accounts. Mm. Uh that definitely does, you know, it's still a psychological hurdle that I'm working on getting over, yes. I guess. Yeah, I, I it's I mean I haven't been in that situation. Um mm. well I've I've obviously had the psychology of, you know, wanting to make money, but not in terms of the figures that you were just talking about. Um, so I think it's, it's always tricky whenever you're thinking about the money, um, to, to trade well. And whenever you're seeing the the money kind of come in or not come in, um, it's always tough. So something that I try to do is, um, hide the money. Like there's a few ways you can do that. You can change the way it presents to pips or whatever, instead of currency. Um, or you can literally just uh, hide it on, in terms of not showing the the trades or whatever. So yeah, in terms of like reducing that emotion towards the money, that's something that 
I think could help. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe what we could do is implement like one or two of the things that we've spoken about and then okay. book like another call in a month. Mm-hmm. And then we can see like how things are going. And if you've had like a better month than previously. Um, and if not, then we can kind of try and change things again. I mean, I'm not an expert, obviously, but mm. um, it's always good to get like a, an outside view of your trading. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I have seen people um, trade like that where it shows the pips instead of the money. So I think that's yeah. definitely one of the things I'm going to try and implement. And I think going forward, because it looks like we're about to hit, like I said, we're about to hit January highs. So I, I think I see a little more bearish volatility coming our way. I might try to reduce risk to half a percent and just see if yeah. that until I, until I see a clear trend direction in the market. Yeah, I think um, something else you could, I don't know if you do this, but you could have like A, B, and C setups. Mm-hmm. Um, so SMB Capital talk this talk about this quite a lot. Um, it's called like their playbook. And they'll have A, B, C trades. And the A ones are like perfect trades. And the B ones are just slightly off. And then the C ones are like an average trade. Um, and you could do it where you're saying, okay, on the C ones are risk 0.5. On the B ones are risk 0.75, and then on the the A ones are might risk 1.5 because they're you know super super good, and the probability of them hitting TP is much higher than the B and the C. Mm-hmm. Um, that does take quite a lot of work, to be fair, because you've got to put in all that time to figure out what is A, B, and C. But you know, if you have that time, then that's something that you could do. You could just do A and B, right? Mm-hmm. One of the trades you'll risk one cent. One of the what the other trade you risk 0.5. Um so that's something you could also look at, I guess. Um I don't know if you've noticed sometimes whenever you enter a trade, uh certain things pop up and it normally hits TP or it normally doesn't hit TP. So if you're just like writing down that down those little patterns that you see, you can say, okay, whenever I see this pattern with my trade. I'll reduce my risk or I'll put more risk on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have been working on, I have a pretty extensive back testing sheet that I'm still, I think I, um, I, I still work on refining refinement of my entries. Um, and one of the, I have been looking at one of those things. I just, I've been partially back testing in my free time is that if I enter and so I normally trade off the one hour candles is why I right. like to trade off of one or four hours, depending on if I'm swinging. Um, and one of the things I've been thinking about doing for entry wise is because I've done candle positioning. So where I'm going to enter, if the candle meets, if the candle closes, meets my requirements for entry, where I enter on the candle. Right. Um, and I think my next step is I've been playing around with the idea of if the next candle closes against me. So from my, my stock trading, what I like to say is like, if it's going to work, it's going to work. So mm. Usually, like in my stock trading, I know right away. Like, if it goes in my direction and takes off, then I'm right. Um, If not, then I'm wrong. So, something I think I I might work on as well is is refining that. So, like, let's say I'm going for a bullish play, and the next one hour or four hour candle closes bearish, then that's a good chance that I'll probably be wrong, and sort of get those statistics together and see. Yeah. See how that looks for me. (laughs) There is a lot that you can do, though. Like, you could just you could spend years like refining things mm-hmm. and you know going into all those kind of small details so i think there is a point where it's like okay i've got enough to say yeah whenever i see this i can put more risk on or not um mm-hmm. yeah yeah because i ideally i would like to hit if i could hit like 40 to 50 r a year i think that is like i mean that would be ideal. That's where I want to sort of get my strategy refined to. Right. Um, because all of most of my, my funded account money is going to go into funding of my personal account. So, you know, that can withstand periods of 10% drawdown. I mean, cause I, I do long-term investing in the stock market. So periods of 20% drawdown are completely, I'm risk tolerant to that stuff. If it's a swing trade, um, but I think having confidence in my system that, hey, yeah, I might go down, you know, to a 10% drawdown period for a month and not make any money. But overall, I'm going to make, you know, 
forty percent on the account over a period of yeah. a year, year and a half, then I think that's having that in front of me so I can trust it. Well, I think uh, is if, going you, to if you have a look at some of the statistics around the S and P and um, what happens whenever we have like a down first quarter or first month, um, most of the time by the end of the year we're up by quite a mm. bit. Um, so I think that's also kind of nice to know in the back of your mind that, you know, we have had a rough kind of first quarter in terms of the S and P, but it can, or well, normally does end up being quite a good year. So, um, yeah, I think just having confidence that the S and P ultimately is going to be up and I know that might be a little bit delusional, but, um, that's the way that I'm thinking about it anyway. I think, yeah, I mean, that's the way that I'm thinking about it. The- yeah, I've been trying to implement that too because I, I did see a lot of, I've been trying to take like more statistical analysis to it yeah. because I find that it this this these assets follow statistics better than Forex, which is why I've been trying to yes. move away from Forex because Forex is just like, you know, somebody says tweets the wrong thing and the euro plummets, you know, <laughs> for no reason. So, um which I mean, I guess does happen, but you 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 know it happens for like a hundred points instead of four hundred yeah. points. So um, I, I have been trying to implement. I've seen some good statistics that like after a red day in the S and P, like historically, and it's it was something like on the daily candle. I think like after three red days, there's only a forty percent chance that it will be a red day, and it goes down like exponentially after that. There's there's never mm. historically been nine red days in a row. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, so like at eight red days, there's literally like a 12% sh- there. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's never happened, but like statistically there's a probability it's like less than 10% that there will be another red day. Um, and so then where, like where seven, you find these kind of things. Cause I've, I've, um, I've got like, I've it. tried to find things, but like, yeah, there's so many websites out there. <laughs> I also, um, I know that you joined the group, so I send in hmm. like a monthly, fundamentals report that i do um yeah i'll send that in again because it'd be quite useful but it's not like super advanced but it shows what i kind of look for in terms of fundamentals for the s p because that's the only thing that i trade um so you can have a little look at that as well um okay i'm sure that you've got your own stuff anyway um but yeah i mean that sounds really really good we actually tested um just buying i mean there was more stuff to it but just buying the daily candle whenever you see a bullish day and we tested a thing like three years and on average it made like a hundred percent a year risking one percent um there were some other rules with it it wasn't kind of just that but um yeah i definitely think the s p is where i want to be doing my trading because of all these different things that go along with it and the stats around it so yeah i think that's really good that you've kind of got all these stats as well i love i love seeing yeah. stats to be honest yeah so <laughs> i just i just posted it in the discord so that's sort of what i've been going oh, off yeah. of for trying to predict swings so i guess it's uh 16 so yeah so basically like usually if it comes four if it gets like four or five red days in a bear market i just automatically go along it's interesting and i just take six and seven yeah yeah, um, I th- I think it's because you reach that threshold of an actual bear market because of the average yeah. daily loss between six and seven, where you actually enter the uh, whatever analyst considered to be the percentage downturn from the highs that is a bear market, mm-hmm. which is why that probability actually increases. Because once you cross that threshold, traders assume that we're in a bear market, so traders sell. Right. Um, yeah. But then if you hit eight, since it almost never happens, um, yeah. then people start buying again because it's a bargain buy. So I've been trying to implement some stuff like that, but I, I think just the refinement is is something. And uh, I'm in some other like, uh, like, you know, I wouldn't say private groups, but like, you know, groups of like other traders who I've met along my journey. Yeah. Um, and not many people trade the S&P or like indexes. Or if right. they do, they use a very like forexy approach to trading them, um, which yeah. I don't think works well long term. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not like an expert or anything on the S and P. I feel like a lot of people um, 
think like I know everything just because I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> um, but honestly, like I, it's these calls are mainly to to help people. But I feel like you're a lot more advanced than a lot of people that have booked the calls. Um, like the majority of people have got one year experience or less than that. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think with you, it's like super small details. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to see where your trading is in like a month if you if you book a again then. Um, mm -hmm. That'd be super interesting to see. But um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else that you wanted to go over? Whilst we're on no, phone? I think that's pretty much. I think that's pretty much it. I think it'll be good. Um, I'll try and uh, I have some other places where I sort of post some of my charts before I where I'm looking at. So I'll sort of try and. Uh, try and contribute, get some ideas bouncing off, um, you know, try and absorb some information and make some little tweaks and see where I'm at. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for booking a call. Um, yeah, thank you. I hope you have a great day. And um, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.